Hey guys, in this video, I'll be going over the disassembly of the head in preparation for the uh, new motor and belt drive conversion. So the first thing you want to do is remove the motor cover. You can see some black marks up in there. That may be from the smoke when my motor died. Uh, this is the label that came off the motor, in case you need that for future reference. There are three versions of this motor. The first one, the one I have, has been discontinued because it has no internal breaker. And the uh, version two has the same part number plus a V2. And then version three actually, same thing, same part number with a V3. But it also has a larger shaft. So if you go to buy a replacement motor, you need to know if you have uh, version one, two, or three. As far as the electronics go, the only thing you need to do is unwire the two plugs that go, or the two uh, leads that go to the motor. In this case, mine are black, uh, let's see, black and brown. And then you can leave everything else uh, just as it is in there. And then the next thing I did was disassemble the entire micrometer. Now, you may not need to do this part to get the spindle to drop out. I, I don't remember, but I never use the quill anymore. I've always had mine locked and I actually removed the quill arms when I did the CNC conversion. So I'm not going to be putting any of this back in. I'll probably just make an aluminum faceplate uh, so you don't have to see this giant hole. But uh, you could try leaving that in if you, if you want to skip that step. The next thing I do is remove the RPM sensor and then... Let's see, I think after that it's going to be the... Uh, you actually can't pull that out unless you unwire it. So you just saw I just lifted it up and set it there over on the left. And then you can remove the drawbar. I don't know what that's called, cover. And then the drawbar itself uh, comes right out. Uh, the next thing I take off is the index ring that the RPM sensor actually reads. I don't know if that's a Hall effect sensor or some other type of sensor, but I'm going to try and reuse mine because I want to keep the tech on my on my motor. In fact, I'm actually going to try and send that signal to Linux CNC. Hopefully it can also know what the spindle's up to. So then I pulled a big C clip and that was it for the spindle. The next thing I did was remove the rest of the quill drive uh, system because I'm not going to be using the quill, like I said. And there are two versions of the uh, belt drive where one where you maintain the quill functionality and one where you do not. I'm doing the one where you do not because I just don't ever think I'm going to use the quill again. So the next thing we do is move to the second shaft and you saw me pull another snap ring and then this little shield. And then the next thing I did, and you actually, uh, you don't want to do this right here is remove the high, low gear, uh, uh, selector. There's going to be a couple of detent balls that fall out of here, but you want to leave this on until a later step. And I'll point out when that is. Uh, there's one other piece that comes off, and it's the detent plate that those balls ride in. And then I always like to put my screws back in where they came after removing the part. That way, it just makes it easier to keep track of everything. The next thing I did was remove this plastic gear off the counter shaft or secondary shaft and just a big screwdriver pried it right up. If uh, this broke, I wouldn't have cared because I'm not reusing it anyway. There is a belt drive conversion where you can actually run the belt to the secondary shaft and then you can maintain the high-low selector but I'm going to be running my belt drive directly to the spindle. Another snap ring and then we're going to drive the rest of that uh, counter shaft out here in just a minute. So you need to push down the collar that's around the spindle. I didn't realize it was spring-loaded and it took me a while to figure it out but when you push it down you can remove a key and I think I show that key here in just a second and uh, mine was really really hard to push. That spring was very tough. And you can see once I removed it, it allowed the spindle to drop down and uh, slam into a part that I still have bolted up. I uh, didn't realize that was going to happen. I probably should have known. Oh, yeah, there's the key. So you can remove the spring and that little cap, and the spindle comes right out. I'm not going to go into the spindle teardown. I'll do that uh, probably in a separate video or maybe just on the reassembly video. And then the next thing you want to do is loosen up the head so you can tilt it. An easier thing to do, trust me on this, if you can't get to the back side of your head, just remove it all the way. I could not get to the back side of mine and you can see here that I'm farting around with this uh, Allen wrench trying to remove this, trying to loosen up this set screw that works on the high-low adjuster. Uh, this took me like an hour and I was literally looking at my webcam or my camcorder as a mirror and then doing it mostly by fill and I did finally get it out and then there's that uh, selector, I don't, I don't really know what you call that, shift fork I guess probably. The shift fork comes right out and those gears uh, right there on the secondary shaft that you can see, those are also plastic gears. So from the other side, this is the bottom side of the head, of course it's turned sideways. I just used a really long bolt, actually it was a stud, 
and pounded out the counter shaft, and then you can reach back there and pull out the gear set. That's pretty much all there is, but if you don't remove the head or you can't get back there, it's going to be a nightmare. I should have removed the head. It would have been easier in the long run, but a lesson learned, I guess. The next thing I did was use a big two-inch piece of aluminum again through the bottom, and I pounded out the uh, actual spindle, and I'll be removing those bearings in a separate video as well because they're also getting upgraded. All right, so that's everything for disassembly. If you have questions, post them below. Hit like while you're thinking about it, and for those of you who are visiting, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks, guys.